Hi guys, I'm at Ghost Triple C, and today I'm bringing you a review of Outback um, from Classified Series. If you guys are enjoying all my content I've been putting out, please hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below. Uh, let me know what you guys remember about Outback. Um, his real name is Stuart R. Selkirk. Um, he's a big piney. He was born in Big Piney, Wyoming. Uh, he was in the U.S. Army Service. He's a sergeant, wilderness specialist, infantry, surviving, survival training instructor, Jungle Warfare Training Center Survival School, uh, which is training. Um... Outback made his first appearance in G.I. Joe number 59 alongside a number of other characters and vehicles. General Hawk and his convoy of vehicles included the, the new slam anti-aircraft artillery were traversing the Rocky Mountains where they planned to meet, up with, meet with Outback, whom had been deployed to the region sometime before the test. New survival gear. Sorry. <clears throat> Deployed to the region sometime before to test the new survival gear in the field. As they headed at the mountain, our bank contracted. Sorry. They tried to contract it. Sorry. The convoy by flashing Morse code with his mirror and instructing the Joes to halt their ascent as the avalanche had made the road impassable. He later met with them elsewhere and gave his report on the new field gear, saying the equipment was junk that fell apart and, it, and the food was so bad it was inedible. As the convoy continued across the mountain, Outback relaxed atop the hammock until the group genetically modified hunting hawks sent out by a raptor and Cobra Commander attacked the convoy and tore away the scraps of the APC tarp. The joke assumed this is a our behavior was a result of an avalanche spooking the birds, but Outback observed that they were thousands of miles from the actual habitat. Looks much much larger than the typical bird of the species. And were outfaded with ribbons on their legs. In other words, they were pets. <laughs> Um, after the, the birds led, led Cobra to Joe's convoy, the Cobra commander initiated his attack. Outback was pivotal in a retaliation, meaning the slam to attack the Cobra commander. Outback went on to a major role in the story arc and stretch across issues 61 to 67 which the team consistently, uh, constant, consistent, this is, I'm going to say the consistent team of Outback, Snowdrop, Stockard, and Quick Kick, infiltrating the Soviet Republic of Bo Bovir, I, I'm sorry I'm butchering that, on a rescue mission. The four of, were discharged from the service in their personal. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Mm. Records were. Damn it. Records were erased during the mission, giving the Pentagon complete deniability in the events of capture. The team headed to Barville, disguised as various. Representatives 
of a handful of na nations with Albert posing as an emissary of uh, Ab Arab oil fleet. However, the mission goes very badly and everyone but Albert is captured and sent to the Gulag. When Albert frees the nation of Bolivar under Stockard orders, as Stockard wanted someone to get out with the real story of what happened to the mission. This led to... <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. This led to the first crossover between special missions in the main series, in which Outback Escapes is chronicled when a natural news breaks of his capture of three mysterious men captured in Bolivar. On the rescue mission, the Joes recognized their teammate and realized that Outback had escaped. This led some of the team, Legendary in particular, to assume that Outback abandoned the others to save himself. After his return, to, he is debriefed by the government and re returns to the pits of Vito. But his homecoming is very tense, as many Jews are unhappy to see him, given their assumption of what happened and the fact that no one of his team knows for sure what really occurred. During the further complications of Outback leading under orders from the Pentagon not to discuss the details with anyone who does not have a need to know. Oh, this is long. The practical result of the Outback fringing ignorance of the entire affair of Bonavir when the other Joes questioned him on the matter, letter that pushes the matter and insulting Albert and threatening him, prompting Albert to pull a survival knife on a wedding leading to the momentary standoff. This is arguably the most tense moment of the internal argument found in the original R.A.H. story, Real American Hero Stories. Once Stalker and the company are rescued by Stormshadow and his team, they return and Stalker tells Albad that the knowledge of his escape kept them going. As Stalker was confident that he knew he was able to get the truth out regarding what happened. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. I am tired. Um, yeah. Outback is a great character. When I was a kid, I used to pretend he was actually uh, Chuck Norris because his haircut. <laughs> I didn't have this version of Outback. I had this version. And, um... I used to think he was Chuck Norris. <laughs> um, this is the guy you know, from like um, those movies that he did when he was young. But uh, yeah, I think like Outback, his guns are really cool. His automatic um, machine gun he has. And I think, I, correct me if I'm wrong, that might be a scorpion, but I'm not 100% sure. He comes with a backpack with the trench shovel. And this backpack here, which can hold the shovel and the gun. He has a handgun, which has a little flashlight on it. And they're both the same when it comes to weapons. And he has this flashlight. Which is really cool. 
and he has a knife. So he has a lot of gear, which is cool because he's a survivalist. Next paint is silver with a black handle. But yeah, the, the only difference is between these two figures is the paint job and the, the uh, hair on him is white and the hair on him is orange. Reddish orange. Yeah, even the banana is the same, I think. No, the banana is green on him and blue on it, on the type of orange. Green. But yeah, uh, the backpacks are a little different colors. This one's more tan, this one's more brown, and the brown one goes to tire horse. You can tell by the straps on the back. Um, but the guns are exactly the same. Well, I mean, the color of this one is a little bit lighter than... Uh, this is black, this is probably a, a dark brown on him. But, um... Yeah, uh, let's go over his articulation real fast. Uh, he can do full 360 on the arms, full 360 on the head. Uh, he can do 360 at the bicep here. Uh, double jointed elbows. His wrists are, can swivel and bend like this. And... And the uh, left hand can be like this. Uh, he has an ab crunch, a, a pretty good one. He has a waist swivel, drop down the hips, do the splits. Um, he has a, a thigh rotation right here, double jointed knees. He, he has a boot cut right here that can uh, swivel. And he's on the same hinge joint uh, ball peg on the, the bottom of his foot. But yeah, that's it. I think it's a great character. Um, which version do you guys prefer? You prefer the Tiger Force version? Or the regular version. I prefer the tire wood with it. He looks cooler in the orange. I mean, I like the survival shirt on him. But I like the white hair. He looks more tough and strong. I don't know. He's just... He's like younger and older, basically. is what I'm thinking of when I see these guys. But yeah, I, I like the um, Outback character. He's a cool character. Hope you guys did too. Um, if you guys like a review of uh, uh, Outback, the little story I told, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, comment below what was your favorite uh, episode or comic book with Outback in it. You guys have a great day, and you'll do!